evening and welcome to InfoWars Nightly News with me, your host, Paul Joseph Watson, on this Friday, February 17th edition. Coming up, Rob Dew interviews James Wesley Rawls about his new book, which deals with the coming financial collapse and survival techniques. It's a book of fiction, but also contains some very real solutions for everybody to be involved with. Now, the news, our top headline tonight. FEMA follows DHS in monitoring news coverage of its activities 24-7. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, has followed in the footsteps of the DHS in looking to hire a private contractor that will monitor news coverage of the agency's activities on a 24-7 basis. Quote, FEMA is planning to award a 100% small business set-aside contract to a media monitoring firm that can monitor, archive and measure all local news in major Nielsen markets, all nationally broadcast news and all cable outlets for their news coverage of FEMA activities in the field across the US, reports Government Security News. Uh, and the program is similar in nature to a DHS monitoring effort that stoked controversy and a congressional hearing after it emerged that the DHS had hired an outside contractor, General Dynamics Advanced Information Systems, to monitor social media outlets along with a wit list of web sites including the Drudge Report on a 24-7, 365 basis in order to uncover, quote, any media reports that reflect adversely on the U.S. government or the department. And so we have this raft of uh, federal agencies, we'll talk about the FBI in a minute, uh, suddenly in a scramble to keep a constant watch on what people are uh, reporting on or saying about the government online. And as we heard during the um, DHS subcommittee hearing yesterday, this is not aimed at newspaper people, you know, people who produce news content. It's not aimed at bloggers. I mean, it's only going to make us talk about it even more. It's going to make us talk about the federal government in a negative context even more. I mean, this is aimed at creating a chilling effect wherein the average American will be more reluctant to criticize their government because of the fear that they could face some kind of reprisal. Uh, and in the particular case of FEMA, this agency was, of course, caught completely botching the response to Hurricane Katrina. Of course, we know they got massive new funding and powers as a result of that, but their image did take a pounding. So now they're trying to massage their image back into a good state. But what is FEMA preparing for that requires them to monitor the Internet 24-7 uh, to gauge the reaction to their activities? Well, could it be the rollout of clergy response teams during a national emergency? These are pastors and religious representatives trained by the federal government, as we reported in 2006, to, quote, quell dissent and pacify citizens to obey the government in the event of a declaration of martial law. And that, of course, is something that can't be dismissed as a conspiracy theory because it's an admitted program. So we got FEMA very interested in keeping tabs on what people are thinking of its activities. And this relates very much to our next story, which is FBI to spy on gold bugs via suspicious comments app. Given the fact that the FBI has characterized the view that the U.S. should return to the gold standard as an extremist belief held by potential domestic terrorists, should gold bugs be concerned about the agency's efforts to create a new app that tracks suspicious comments made on social media websites? A document posted online recently by the Federal Bureau of Investigation seeks developers to create an app that will have the capability to, quote, rapidly assemble critical open source information and intelligence to quickly vet, identify, and geolocate breaking news events, incidents, and emerging threats. And again, just like the DHS, just like FEMA, the FBI is joining the stampede to have the news, blogs, and social media websites constantly monitored on a full-time basis for keywords of their choosing. And uh, just like the DHS stonewall, the congressional hearing yesterday by trying to restrict the debate to disaster relief, the FBI is doing the same with this program. But we know from last week's announcement out of the FBI's counter-terror division, in addition to the FBI's Communities Against Terrorism program, that people who think, um, people who they think should be monitored as potential domestic terrorists are the same people who post tweets and Facebooks about 
believing in the gold standard. And, of course, we had the story about buying a cup of coffee with cash at an Internet cafe and also buying food in bulk. All of these activities are deemed suspicious and potentially indications of terrorism by the FBI. Um, so that's, that's what they're going to be interested in when it comes to monitoring social media. Former FBI agent Mike German said comments made on a Twitter account deemed suspect by the FBI could create, quote, a cloud of suspicion over people merely using social media to express their First Amendment rights, warning that the feds could use the data to, quote, increase video surveillance in a neighborhood. And this is what he said. Quote, part of what we want to protect is the freedom to speak your mind, to criticize government policies without the fear that the government will take it the wrong way and start treating you as if you're a threat, German told Fox News. But of course, as we know, the DHS see something, say something videos, the FBI flyers going out to businesses like internet cafes, tattoo parlors, um, military surplus stores, etc. The Mayak report and a host of other examples spanning back years prove that informed Americans who are angry or dissatisfied at the federal government have already been identified and targeted as the primary terror threat. So that's what the FBI, the DHS and FEMA are going to be interested in with this monitoring program of social media, Facebook, Twitter comments, etc. Moving on. To our next story, Virginia House passes NDAA nullification 96 to 4. In a move completely ignored by the establishment media, the Virginia House of Delegates has voted in favor of House Bill 1160, legislation that codifies in Virginia law non compliance with the kidnapping provisions of sections 102 and 1022. Sorry, 1021 and 1022 of the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, NDAA. The final vote held on February 14th was 96 to 4. The bill was sponsored by Delegate Bob Marshall and was introduced on January 16th of this year. Virginia Governor Bob McConnell is on record as opposing the legislation, and as we know, he was, of course, on Obama's infamous uh, Council of Governors for this Marshall Law Plan that they've got. And HB 1160 reads as follows, a bill to prevent any agency, political subdivision, employee or member of the military of Virginia from assisting an agency of the armed forces of the United States in the conduct of the investigation, prosecution or detention of a citizen in violation of the United States Constitution, the Constitution of Virginia or any Virginia law or regulation. And... Uh, We've got other states with legislation pending for NDAA nullification, which, of course, is the, um, in specific terms, the indefinite detention provision of the NDAA. So it's been passed in uh, Virginia, and this is the perfect opportunity for info warriors to lobby their state lawmakers um, to get these bills passed in other states and kill the indefinite detention provision of the NDAA. And you can find more information on what stage those different bills are at in your particular state um, by visiting the website 10thamendmentcenter.com. Military top brass tell troops not to march in Ron Paul rally. An email leaked by multiple active duty personnel shows that the military has issued a warning to troops encouraging them not to take part in the upcoming Veterans for Ron Paul 2012 march in Washington on Monday. Quote, this is from the email, as a reminder, active duty personnel are prohibited by DOD Directive 1344.10, paragraph 41210, from marching in a partisan political parade regardless of whether they are in uniform or civilian clothes, reads the email which was sent from a Navy.mil address and eventually found its way to the organizer, Adam Kokesh, who of course has featured on this show. Um, and you can go to Infowars.com, read the full email, but in this email they add that even non-active duty and retired military, of course this whole march is veterans for Ron Paul, it's about you know, mainly people who have retired from the military. Even they cannot march, according to this intimidation tactic by the military. Um, even if they're not in uniform, they can't march. It says they cannot be seen to be endorsing a candidate, which, of course, is impossible. 
that's what the march is all about, endorsing Ron Paul. So the military is basically threatening people who've been out of the military for years, veterans, that they can't publicly support Ron Paul. And so, again, despite the fact that Ron Paul has the most financial support from the military out of all the Republican candidates combined, more than Obama, more than everybody else put together, Romney, Gingrich, all of them, the top brass are trying to prevent Ron Paul from being seen in the eyes of the American people as having the support of the military. And so it's fine, you know, to have Barack Obama doing a photo op with the troops. But God forbid should veterans who've been retired for years have anything to do with Ron Paul. And of course, this is not the first time that the army has tried to sabotage and intimidate people for partaking in a Ron Paul rally. Remember the end the Fed rallies of 2008, which, of course, were organized by Ron Paul supporters. Ron Paul himself um, was in attendance at several of them, as was Alex Jones. And, of course, the United States Army Reserve Command sent out an advisory to alert law enforcement or other military and intelligence agencies that these protests were taking place. In that instance, they were treating the free exercise of the First Amendment as a potential terrorist threat, during which the army were ready to be mobilized. So, again, they're trying to pull the same stunt with this Ron Paul march on Monday. So, I mean, people should of course, not be intimidated by these tactics. They, you know, they're not going to court-martial thousands of people who are not even active duty in the military anymore. And so we encourage everyone who can make it to attend the March Veterans for Ron Paul, which begins at the Washington Monument 12 noon and ends 3 p.m. at the White House on Monday.